All information contained in this podcast is general in nature and does not consider your individual circumstances. You should consider the appropriateness of this information with regards to your individual objectives, financial situation and needs. Welcome to Sharing More Than The Sheets, a podcast to help you and your partner make better financial and lifestyle decisions so that you can both focus on the things that you love. I'm your host, Michael Curry, financial planner, green thumb, husband, and just dad. This podcast is part of a short series to help and encourage current and potential small business owners to improve and grow. I will be talking to experts in their fields, as well as successful business owners, and we will be discussing what they do and how they do it so well. Starting a business or running a business requires a particular virtue that many people underestimate, and that's courage. Today, I've invited Torin Minutillo with us, who is the CEO of Atigy, to talk about this very, very topic. Thank you so much for joining us, Torin. Thanks, Michael. It's a pleasure to be there. I'm looking forward to it and having a bit of fun. Yeah, oh, mate, can't, can't wait, honestly, because when I when I came across your profile on LinkedIn and looked at what you do, I saw that this is it's it's a topic. It's something that you talk about. And personally, I, I think I underestimated it. Like I, I do understand, I, and I always talk about believing in oneself and betting on you know, for someone, it's important for someone to bet on themselves to to make decisions and to 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 take risks and to have confidence in what they do. But the word courage never came to mind. And you've literally you've researched this. You've researched this exact topic. Um, and I think I read somewhere that you've done studies that show that eighty five percent of people live consistently below the line of yeah. courage. Yeah. How did you become intrigued on this particular topic? Yeah, uh, look, it probably just evolved, Michael. Um, so, you know, as my journey, when I look back uh, with my development and my growth um, for how I've, uh, you know, I've been in business now 32 years now and uh, coaching other businesses and helping them, it, when I reflected back on what was the, the thing that separated me from the things that I got in my business life and in my life in general to um, when I didn't get what I want and then observing a lot of other business owners along the way uh, on my path, this courage piece was always interesting to me. And, you know, you described it as, uh, you know, overcoming fear to push through a barrier, uh, taking risks. Um, but the ingredient is uh, the virtue of, of courage. Um, and so I, I went to sort of a little bit deeper, you know, to find out, well, what is it that some people have this courage and others don't? And what does actually courage really mean? And how do we cultivate more of it? And how do we use it for our benefit in trying to, you know, grow uh, in our businesses and wherever it is we want? And look, you know, we'll talk today about business, because that's what I do. But these are all life principles as well. They're not they're not just uh, exclusive to business owners that um, these principles can be adapted to all areas of our life, whether it be you know, financing, investing, relationships, health and well-being, um, you do need a level of courage to break through that comfort zone, which is sort of what we're talking about here. Yes. Um, and then once you get out of your comfort zone, we know that most of us always reflect back and know that on the other side of the comfort zone is where all the good things happen in your life. And certainly in business, that's very, very true. Yeah. Would you say it's it's what separates a good business owner from an, an excellent business owner? Well, I'd say it's one of the determining factors. There's obviously, yes. there's never just one thing. So I always talk in, when I talk to business owners about their journey, there's never just one silver bullet that's going to make all the difference, right? There's mm. always a collection of things. Um, but certainly courage uh, is one of those pivotal things that uh, without it, um, it's very hard to forge through and do the things you need to do in business, you know, whether it's just courage to have the discipline to show up day in, day out, and do the work that's required, that requires a level of courage, whether it's courage to make a difficult, you know, decision, um, should you take the risk and, you know, roll the dice and and not just hope for the best, but have it have it strategically mapped out, all these things take a level of courage. And, and, and so probably what I'd like to maybe just explore with you is that there's two types of courage. There's a courage where you need that courage to bust through a fear barrier. And then there's a courage of how you show up with your behaviours on a day-to-day -day basis and where they sit in which, whether it's empowering you to go to where it was you want to go or whether your behaviours are disempowering you and taking you away. And, and most of this stuff 
is at a unconscious or subconscious level and not necessarily something that we think about day in day out so you know, so it's important for people who are listening to this to understand there's you know, there's a there's different types of courage um, but the actual virtue of courage which is what we need um, you know there's a, there's a great quote that I um, uh, often reflect on and I've got it written up on my wall in my office is that uh, this is from a famous writer of CH Lewis is like courage is not simply one of the virtues but it's the form of every virtue at its testing point. Wow. It basically means that courage is going to be the pivotal point of every virtue and everything you need. There's going to come a point where you're going to need to have courage. So it, in that quote, it says that courage is the form of every virtue of, of, of how we build our lives around. And, and so, you know, for me, when I studied this and really went into, you know, what's separating us from getting what we want, and how to help people evolve, um, courage became a very pivotal part of it. And you know, and you asked the question about, you know, the separ- is it is it the separator? It's definitely one of them, and one of the key ones. You know, we can talk more about, you know, the line of courage and above and below, um, which I find people really resonate with when they get it explained and understand. Certainly on their business journey, but as I said before, it, it also relates to all areas of your life if you um, if you choose to engage in it. It's. I do agree with you. You know, it's. It isn't the. There are many determining factors because you mm. can be courageous and have <laughs> a crappy business and a crappy plan with crappy execution, and Correct. it still won't get you anywhere. Um, but at the same time, I feel like it. Like like that quote. I love that quote because, you know, you can have the most amazing business plan, um, the perfect execution, the the best way of doing things from a you know from a management perspective people and all the rest of it and marketing but if you don't have that courage to 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 do it or to mm. to be there when things are tough or to to adapt or to make quick decisions then it's all going to fall to pieces yeah well what i can tell you about that michael is courage and procrastination don't go well in the same sentence right yep. um so as i said you can have the best laid plans um but if you're procrastinating um that's just generally a, a, a sign of a bit of fear of potentially failure which the antidote to fear is courage is to break through that and then to understand at what level is that impacting you to achieve what it is that you're trying to achieve? So is it is it just a little bit that is causing you a problem or is this is this the determining factor that's you've got all the pieces of the puzzle together but this is the bit that you don't have? And if you don't have the courage piece, then, yeah, it can be, um, you know, limiting. And, and as, as I say, the studies show that it can be disempowering you uh, without you even realising it. And you alluded to before is the study that, uh, shows that 85% of the world's population consistently live below the line of courage. And and that means that 85% aren't getting what they're setting out to do. And only 10 to 15% actually achieve the dreams that they set out to do because they consistently live above the line of courage. You yes. Know? So, yeah, no, it's really, it's, um, it's, it's a really important part of a business life journey. And as I said, it, it applies to all parts of our life as well. Yeah, and can you explain the line of courage? So it's yes, um, I I'm is, I'm not sure if it's from um the, the work of David Hawkins right. or um if it's something that you've developed yourself. But if you can, because I really find that fascinating, and I think when you can explain things like what you said, people resonate probably with it because they can visualize it and they can see it. And when you're aware of something, it's easier to sort of know what's going on. Yeah, well, awareness is the key, right? So you know, I always say that the number one skill in business is self awareness to become really aware of who you are, what you're doing, why you're getting your current results, why the, you're not getting the current results you want. And to do that, you need to become aware. So like everything, any learning process, until you become aware of something that you're doing or you may not be doing, um, you can't then move to the next phase of accepting that and then potentially taking some action. So, so yeah, I'll just if you give me a couple of minutes, I'll just explain to you about it's an adaptation of the work from uh, Dr. David Hawkins. So, it's a bit of background. He's a psychologist that uh, did a 30-year study around human behavior and what gets us to achieve what we want in our life and what doesn't. And so what he did was he grouped up all these behaviors, observing a lot of people over a long period of time, you can, you can imagine. And this was, this, this was all done and published in a book that he wrote in 1995 called uh, Power Versus Force. 
Um, so if anybody's interested in this, they can certainly look up that book and I'd highly recommend it. And it is a little bit heavy because it's a little bit psychologically based, but if you can work through it, you'll, you'll learn a lot of things. And I've actually read that book three times now and I've got a different thing out of it each time based on how I've developed along the way. But essentially um, what we want to do is just imagine that you, if David calibrated all these uh, behaviours from literally a, a marker of zero all the way up to a 1,000. And so to give you an example, things like shame and guilt probably sit at the bottom of that um, line, if you like, or down near zero to 20 calibrated. And then the things up at the top uh, are, are enlightenment, you know, the, the people that are actually become enlightened on the planet. Now, there's not too many people that have reached that level. Maybe the Dalai Lama has reached that level as a living person at the moment. But most of us sort of live in this scale somewhere between, you know, literally zero and, and I'd say the maximum people get is probably six or 700 as on his calibration. Anyway, the number's not, not that important. What's important to understand and what have I've adapted is, is the, the virtue of courage or this behavior of courage sits at about 200. And what I observed out of his study was there's a whole lot of behaviors that live below this line of courage. You literally draw a line on a piece of paper and write down the, the things that are below. And then there's a whole lot of behaviors that live above this line. So you can visualize that. So the things that um, are below the line to give people perspective is, you know, things like hate, uh, anxiety, antagonistic behavior, blaming, complaining, being aggressive, withdrawal, in denial, being vindictive. So these are all things that we can relate to from time to time that, you know, we fall into these traps of behaving this way. And certainly if you're in business, you can see that all those types of behavior aren't going to help you. And central to that is fear. It sits below the line of courage. And if you imagine what's above the a line of courage, there's things like, you know, optimism, taking responsibility, uh, being intentional, energetic, uh, empathetic, understanding, acceptance, uh, being committed, harmonious, compassionate. So these are all, you know, a handful of ones that I've, and there's lots of them above and below, but that just gives you an example. So what David Hawkins discovered was that, 85% of the people on the planet live consistently below and only a few can live consistently above. And this line was the separation between empowering you to get what you want in your life and below is disempowering you and taking you away from what you want. And, you know, we know what it's like when you are around someone who's complaining a lot and blaming the outside world for their problems. They don't create good energy around them to draw more people into them. Whereas when you're around people who are constantly, consistently living above the line of courage, they create energy fields around them, which drags more of that towards you. So you can see why that flows on to empowering you to achieve what you want, as opposed to below the line is going to move people away from you and, and, and not help you get what you want. So if you relate this back to a business perspective, you know, literally attracting customers and clients towards you. If you're consistently behaving below, they're just going to get repelled from you. Whereas if you are, mm. if you are consistently living above, they're going to get attracted to you and actually help you thrive because you're now helping them. And, and this is one of the things that came out of his study was that these, all the behaviors create energy fields around you. And, you know, some people sort of believe in that and some don't, but I think there's no, there's plenty of scientific evidence that this is what happens, let alone, you know, um, anecdotal evidence. And as I said before, if you're in a room with a couple of people that are consistently complaining, you know that there's an energy field around you that doesn't make you feel good. Um, yep. So that's sort of a, a bit of a snapshot. Um, interesting things that I've observed as I've gone along helping business owners is that you know leadership consistently lives above the line of courage. Um, being intentional and growing a business, you need to behave consistently above. Um, probably the last thing I'll say about that, Michael, is that it's not – uh, feasible or even des desirable necessary to be 100% of the time above. Right? So what happens is in our day-to-day -day life, we do drift below and above this line. The key thing is that awareness to become conscious of when you are in a complaining situation or you might be a bit antagonistic or you're blaming other people, you're feeling guilty or you, you know, you're trying to shame someone into doing something. Um, and, and becoming aware that when you're doing that, 
it's okay to do that and fall below the line, but not for you know hours in the day, not for days in the week, not for weeks in the month, and not for in some cases people live there forever. So it's about becoming aware and teaching yourself when I am falling below the line to become aware of it, so you can shift shift to a behaviour that's above the line. And for instance, you know if you're withdrawing from a situation that might be difficult in your business, the above the line is to take acceptance and take responsibility for that and be intentional about how you're going to improve the situation and not withdraw potentially for days and weeks because you don't feel good about where you're at. So um, it, it, for me, it's it's actually developed into a bit of a diagnostic way of actually helping people because when I put this literally, you know, one piece of paper with all the behaviours above the line and below, people can identify in it. And guess what happens most of the time? Most people go, oh, actually, I live most of my life above the line of courage. And I go, oh, really, do you? And then <laughs> then when we start unpacking it, after about 20 minutes, I go, actually, I live a fair bit below. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and, and then they go, all right, so would you say it's 20% below and or 30% below? Or if they go, actually, it's probably more like 80% below and only 20% wow. above. So then the work and the coaching. Why is that? Why is what, that? What, what, yeah, why do people live below? Do you think it's the way, so I mean, Mike, is it to do with the way people were brought up, for example, or life experiences, or is it just they haven't really exercised that particular muscle in their, well, it's not really a muscle, but that particular oh, okay. skill. Yeah, well, where, where does it normally come from? Because I know some people that, um, for example, I went to school with, which were not confident. And now if I meet them, they're the most confident people in the world and you could tell I know confidence is different to courage, but I can tell they're very different to what they were. And I know some people that were very confident and then I'll meet them 10 years later and they seem very much the opposite. So I feel like, yeah, I don't think it has much to do with the way we were brought up, but uh, yeah, I'd love I'll to see what your, your thoughts are. Yeah, no, it's, in, it's a great question. Um, and, you know, I don't know if there is a definitive answer to it, but, you know, we, we can unpack it a bit and, and that's probably that's what's useful here is for people to resonate with it, right, and to go, okay, why do I spend the majority of my time? And so my training and my understanding of human behaviour will say that uh, our primal instinct is to be driven by safety first, right? So that, that's our premise is our, our brain is built, our, our old part of our brain, so our, you know, what people call the croc brain or the lizard brain, the, the oldest part of it, is really built to keep us safe. Um, so... If it's safety first, then it creates these behaviours. So all, all these behaviours below the line are a representation of fear and to keep us safe. These podcasts have been brought to you by Better Financial Planning Australia. To book a free 15-minute phone chat, visit betterfinancialplanning.com.au. So if you think about above the line, one of the things I didn't mention before is that trust sits central above the line, trusting in yourself, trusting in the people around you, trusting in you know your life journey, basically. So trust is a word which means I feel safe. When you feel safe around other people or a situation or circumstance, we verbalize that as trust. So what's happening below the line is people who become very fearful, and it's a conditioning process over a long period of time. They create belief systems around that they can't achieve what they think they can. And so what happens is the safety mechanism for their own emotional state is to blame somebody else for the situation they're in. So they get into a pattern of blaming and complaining and not taking responsibility. So it literally becomes an unconscious behavior. And until you bring awareness to it, it's very hard to break that cycle. So go back to your reference to people that you've met, you know, that were, that were you know, uh, maybe not that confident but that you see them now 10, 15 years later and they are. Um, I, I don't necessarily think that may be a necessary breaking through the line of courage. That's just them evolving to understand what serves them best versus what doesn't serve them best. And they've probably psychologically developed to a point, well, if I be, you know, these behaviours, they're not foreign to us. I'm not, I'm not breaking a new ground by saying taking responsibility and accepting where you're at and being committed and inspirational and intentional about what you want to do. That's not rocket science, right? That's, that's as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, that should be our baseline of what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's, yes. you know, that's what actually separates 
the business owners who do achieve what they set out to achieve versus the ones that fall into the trap. And, of course, you know, what happens, Michael, is storms come and there's a bit of a rocky road. You touched on it earlier about building resilience. Well, that's what resilience is. Resilience is about how are you responding to those tough times, not uh, avoiding the tough time, tough times. You know, we're all going to have the tough times, ups and downs. We don't always feel 100% great every day or every week. And, and there's times when you get into a place where you get into a rut and things aren't going that well. But what ends up happening is you create these behaviours and these conditioning processes around you which keep you in that place. And, you know, we've all been there. We've all been in these places. So I said it's about becoming aware of this and then what is the behaviour that can move you quickly out of it. So if you get into a zone where you're complaining a bit and you're being a bit vengeful and you're withdrawing, uh, you don't like what's happening, you're trying to blame someone else for something that went on, catch yourself within the hour and go, right, stop that. What do I need to do? What's the what's the conversation I need to have in, in my head that's pushing me out of, um, you know, above the line of courage? And and often it's the other thing that, you know, probably comes to mind is the reason why we stay below is because that's the comfort zone. That's where it's yes. comfortable. Yes. Right? Um, you know, it does take – the reason why these – behaviors sit above the line of courage because they actually need a level of courage to take responsibility, to be intentional, to be accepting, to be empathetic, to be compassionate, committed. They take a level of courage to wake up and do that, become disciplined to do that on a regular basis. But what I can tell whoever's listening to this who's interested is that over a period of time, and, and I'm talking as little as you know 30 to 60, potentially 90 days, you can shift the way you behave, the way you show up, if you become intentional and you become aware of it. And, and you know, I like my quotes and I'll, I'll give you another one. Is um, So there's a guy called Carl Jung, who's probably the grandfather of psychology. Yep. And one of his famous quotes is, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. Right. Mm. Well, that's a bit deep, but if you listen to no, that, one, it's it's perfect. <laughs> so it's perfect. So the high performers, what I've discovered, Michael, the high performers who are achieving, they're becoming very conscious on a day to day basis of what they're doing. So they don't allow their unconscious reactions to drive everything. They become considered and conscious about where they're going, what they're doing, what their vision is, what their intention is, and so what they're doing is they're they're making their unconscious conscious and so you know this quote's been kicking around for 100 years and uh or thereabouts uh, i think it was the early 1920s yeah okay it's getting close to, to 100 years now um and and it's still true to this day uh i don't think it'll ever change is that we are driven a lot by our unconscious behaviors uh the work from a personal development and psychological development which is work that i help people evolve to become better versions of themselves to get what they want is is to get your unconscious habits and behaviors become conscious to you. And then when you do that, you become aware and then you can decide what are the actions you want to take. And, and one of the actions is we don't do anything, you know, and they're the people that stay stagnant who fall below the line and complain about what they're not getting in their life. You know, so it's really fascinating and interesting, the human behavior. No, I love that quote because when I so, so many times when I talk to a client, for example, and um, we're talking about someone's, or maybe I'll meet someone for the first time, and they're they're telling me their the problem, or they're explaining to me a situation that they're in, or something that's occurred. Normally, and we all do this. I mean, I do it all. I'm sure I do it all the time. And I've actually I have caught myself out doing it sometimes. But we we blame, like you said, we blame fate, we blame fortune or bad luck. But really, it's something subconscious that we're not really aware of. And and until like what you said, until people become aware of that particular thing, you, you literally will just keep blaming fate. And um, I, I love that you mentioned pushing out the comfort zone. You know, push because when you when you push that comfort zone, you're, you're moving it more and more to that line, yeah. in a way. And I was actually going to ask you one of my questions. My, one of my next questions was, how do people get out? How do people become above the line? But you you answered it perfectly because it's. I'm sure there are people listening to this thinking, you know, yes, you know, I'm definitely below the line. I know I need to be above the line. What do I need to do? You know, and I mean. Yeah, well, I, can I just address that? Because I think please, you know, I, I sort of gave a broad brush, but you can get really micro in this and go, okay, um, do you find yourself complaining a lot? You know, day to day, husband, wife, brother, sister, work colleagues, marketplace, 
you know, are you blaming the world for your situation? Do you find yourself complaining? If you just narrow in, and if the person's honest with themselves and they're ready to, to improve, most likely they'll go, yeah, I do, I probably more than I should. Or how is that serving you is the next question. Not that well. All right, well, maybe over the next 30, 60 days, let's just think about, become conscious every time you are, you hear yourself complaining and just stop it. You know, just literally become aware of it and and change it. So until you do that and you practice that little bit, you'll, you'll never. And then the other thing to do is to go, okay, if I'm complaining, what's the behavior above the line that I can move to? And there's always, you know, there's always a yin and the yang. There's always a behavior above the line that you can identify that corresponds to a, a, a behavior below. And that's where the coaching comes in to identify what each individual person's circumstance. So for instance, if you're complaining a lot and blaming uh, other people around you, well, then the first thing to do is accept where you're at and take responsibility. So if, if you did nothing else for 30, 60 days and you focus on each time I'm complaining and blaming, I'll look at how can I take acceptance and responsibility for this? Your energy, who you are, will shift. And the first thing that's going to happen is people around you are going to go, geez, what's changed in you? What, what What's changed your attitude? And that's what it is. People don't, can't put their finger on it, but they can – they can sense a shift in the way you are thinking. You know, and when I run my workshops and things and I talk about this, the people often in the workshops can identify with it clearly. But then they guess what happens is they go, actually, I know a lot of people around me that do this, you know, that uh, yeah, maybe, maybe their spouse, maybe uh, their brother, their sister, their father, their mother, their kids um, are constantly living this way. And, and it helps them to uh, to interact with the people around them, potentially, you know, staff in a business, and to then help them. Because when you start helping other people around you through this, it becomes easier for you and you start to identify it because, you know, there is a, a psychological trait is that it's easier for us to identify flaws in other people than it is in ourselves, right? So when you become aware oh, of this, the first thing you do is you start seeing everybody else doing it. The, the challenge is to go, actually, do I do this as well? And then that's the real self-development, the personal development and, you know, what I call psychological development. Um, yep. So, yeah, so I think, you know, getting granular and specific about what is the behaviour. So it might be that you constantly feel guilty about what you're doing, where you're at. It's like, well, what, what, where's that guilt coming from and how do we alleviate and, and, you know, becoming compassionate with yourself about something that you may or may not have done that is harboring in you, that's holding you back, you need to deal with that, right? And that's these are things that sit below your subconscious. You know, the other one is vulnerability that sits way above. You know, people see vulnerability as potentially a weakness, but it's one of the key strengths and courage is what pushes you forward to become vulnerable. And most people who are actively vulnerable in their business and, and, and their life in general usually report back an experience that actually vulnerability has opened up the doors that wouldn't be open for me. And, and yeah. I'm, ex I'm an example of that, 100%. And, and it's, it's just like anything personally, anything personal. If you, The best way to identify these things sometimes is to talk to someone like a mm. coach like yourself or, or even a discussion with your financial advisor if we're talking money, yeah. for example. But more importantly, someone like yourself, like a, an outsider's perspective, someone that can look into your situation and yeah. be objective and okay. – Michael, just on that, sorry to interrupt, but I think this is super, super important to point that yes. you're making. Not, not because I'm saying people should go and get coaching and, and me being one, but, but the point being is that it's good to understand, this is what I like to explain to people, what's actually happening emotionally to you when you're dealing mm -hmm. with these things, which is everything's driven by an emotional driver and everything, our behavior somewhere deep down. And that's an, that's a, that's a big rabbit hole and a, that's a, like a psychological conversation, right? But, what I will say is that the reason why you as a as a you know financial advisor can really help people work through the, the struggles and me as a business owner is because we don't have the emotion attached to whatever the other person's trying to achieve. Yes. Right. So you can be objective, have clear, conscious thinking that's not going to be interrupted interrupted by an emotional driver within you about the other person that you're trying to help. Yes. So Good coaching, good consulting, good uh, helping of other people, for want of a better word, is about 
being completely objective and not subjective to that personal situation. And, and because you don't bring the emotion to the table, whereas the person who's dealing, so if you're trying to deal through this stuff on your own, your emotions are going to kick in all the time and you're not going to be able to get that clear objectivity that you need to be able to get to the place it is that you want to get. So you might be able to articulate, here's my plan, here's my vision, here's what I want to achieve, but you're pushing up against some barriers. It's most likely there's an emotional driver that's causing those barriers that you need someone who can identify and understands that to actually help you get through to the other side, whether it's financial planning, business growth, health and well-being, whatever, whatever it may be, you know. And I think, you know, here in Australia, we sort of haven't really cottoned on to the to the idea of, you know, dare I say, therapy, coaching, uh, advisory, whereas, you know, in the US, it's, it's it's huge because, every, you know, we all need help to navigate our way through life and, and we expect to just know these things. It's it's like, you know, everything you need, you know, the first um, first pathway of, uh, of growth is to actually learn something. And then if someone can show you and fast track that for you, then you're going to get to whatever it is, your goals that you're trying to achieve a lot quicker. Yeah. And we need someone that tells us what we need to hear, not what we want to hear. Correct. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, again, if you've got someone who hasn't got the emotion in it, they're not going to get, they're not going to feel that emotion. So they're going to no. be able to tell you objectively. Or they'll hold back. They'll hold back. Yeah. Potentially. Okay. Correctly, it is. So, if, I mean, this is another thing. So, if you if you're asking a friend, for instance, who's known you for twenty years about maybe business advice or financial advice, they are going to have a level of emotion around it because they've got a relationship, friendship, whatever it is, with you. Is that the best objective advice? Some people can do that and be very objective, but my experience is that that's less likely than more likely. They need a third party person who can who can look at the terrain that you're in and understand what's the map going forward, basically, and, and be very objective. And I think, you know, what you do in your work and what I'm doing in my work, we can offer that. You can offer, yes. off, offer that objectivity. Yes, and sometimes the friend could be the problem. Correct. And they, <laughs> and um, they're not, they're not going to tell you that. It just reminds me of another story is that we, we often go chasing, you know, someone that we look up to who, um, you know, who might be doing well or we perceive to do well. So I'm modelling myself on this other person. And then what happens is you realize later that, that person's going to a place that they don't really like and you're modeling and chasing them. Yep. And then you figure out later on, oh, shit, they're not going to where they want to go either. So why am I following them? But yep. you don't know that. So that's why you need to do your own internal work to figure out what it is that you want along the way versus what someone else wants along the way. Yes, that's so true, Torin. I love that. And if somebody wanted to contact you, uh, what would be the best way for them to do that? Okay, so I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. Um, I've got, you know, videos and bits and pieces going up there. Um, so just, yeah, search my name, Torrin Minutillo, on on LinkedIn and uh, request a connection, give me a message, and I'll definitely respond to that as quickly as I can. Um, I've got my own website. Um, so the name of my business is Atergy. So that's a, that's a made-up name of attitude and energy. Um, so two words pulled together because I believe they're the foundational blocks of whatever it is you want to achieve or do in life. So I've named my company that. So uh, my business is attergy.com. So there's a website there. There's some services. Uh, you can pick up a copy of the a complimentary copy of the book that I wrote last year uh, in May, which was uh, The Essential in the Game, 10 Guiding Principles and Insights that you need to have a successful business. Um, and they're just some you know, 10 principles that I pulled together for people to give them a starting point around self-awareness and, and just how, what, you know, things that you probably won't find in a, um, from a consultant who's looking to help you implement strategies and systems. This is more about getting your head, getting your head right in business and having the, the best attitude that you can, um, and applying the energy to it. So, so yeah. So if you go to my website, um, it's a real book. I'll send it out in the post. It definitely is free. I'll pay for the postage. So if anybody wants to take the time to put it, put their details in there. I'll send it to them. And yeah, just connect with me on uh, LinkedIn. I love talking to people, particularly around their business journey and just meeting some nice people. Yeah, perfect. And, and I'll put that, I'll put the description of your, uh, sorry, the, I'll put the link to your yeah. website in the description of this episode as well. Yeah. And if anybody wants to have a conversation about that whole line of courage and just, you know, that where it says, I call it the map of courage. Um, and yeah, just, you know, literally it's a 10, 15, 20 minute conversation where they sit with it. They might get an insight about themselves and so happy to do that as well. Um, and yeah, just, just as I said, connect with some people and thanks for the opportunity, Michael. It's been fantastic. Matt, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, and, and finally, I like to finish my jokes off, uh, my <laughs> episodes off with a dad joke. Right. Um, so I don't know if you've 
got any yourself, but uh, no, I found one very fitting, by the way, for today's topic. So Go on, uh, today, I, <laughs> today I finally told my family about my hot dog addiction. Um, it was really hard, but I managed to muster all the courage to do so. <laughs> I like that. How can I surpass that, mate? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, my um, my dad jokes. Uh, I've got two adult daughters now, so they're 20, well, they're 28 and 30. Uh, we're going on that. I uh, better not say that because they haven't reached those ages yet. Um, so my my dad jokes fall on deaf ears. I just get uh, you know uh, a sideways grin. Um, but yeah, I do love my dad jokes. I just, they just come very spontaneous, though. Oh, they do. They're the best ones. I mean, to be honest with you, my kids are the same. I just, I mean, that's half the reason I've got this podcast show, just so I could tell people dad jokes. So, <laughs> because I mean, the, the other day it took me two hours to grill a chicken. Um, it still wouldn't tell me why it didn't, why it crossed the road. But it's, yeah, it's. <laughs> I did. Mean, you were prepared for this, I could tell. I was, I was. I'm just Googling it. You should have given me the heads up, man. I might have. Uh... Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, perfect, mate. Very good. Thank you, Tyrone. I appreciate your time so much, mate. Uh, also, one of, the, one of the things I just finish off with, uh, you know, enjoyment is one of the keys of life so always having a, a laugh about the situations it's serious subjects that we talk about but um, always like to bring the lighter side to it so I really appreciate that well we have to we need it we need it thank you Torrin thank you so much for your time excellent mate. thanks thanks for joining us on sharing more than the sheets please make sure you subscribe to be updated with future episode releases and feel free to share this episode with any friends or family that you think it might benefit Please visit us at sharingmorethanthesheets.com.au to submit questions or requests for future podcast topics. These podcasts have been brought to you by Better Financial Planning Australia. To book a 15-minute phone chat, visit betterfinancialplanning.com.au.